Today on the channel, we are talking about five tips on tornado hunting. Whether you're an enthusiast, forecasting at home, just testing your metal against the atmosphere, or if you're someone like me who actually goes and looks for these things, I think this is gonna be an interesting video. And there's a lot coming up right after this. Everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Rachel Sanner. This is Tornado Titans and today we're talking tornado hunting secrets. This is going to be very good if you are something a little bit more than a beginner. If you're a beginner, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible as well so you can learn too. But intermediate advanced folks, you're just like trying to round out your forecast skills so this next storm season you're ready to look for tornadoes when you're making your morning forecast. Well this video is for you. So hey, if you haven't done so, and this seems intriguing, wait, there's a weather channel and it's doing education. We're talking weather. Well, hit that subscribe button because we do a lot of this. And we also have live storm chasing coming up, which is going to be a lot of fun. Also, leave comments. Let me know what you think about this video, but also ask your questions. I love answering folks' questions with videos about weather, storm chasing, photography, you name it. We want to do it on this channel. I'm excited. So hey, without further ado, I think it's time to get into these five tips because this is going to be a fun video. I can't wait. So let's get to it. Tip one. I know, I just said let's hit, hit tip one, right? I did. I said let's go into tip one. But what I really mean is that we're going to give you a caveat first. And that's because this is important, very important. This is my style. This is what I look for. There are many ways to forecast for tornadoes. Probably some better. I don't know. I try it this way. It seems to work. So these are some of the things I'm looking for. Another thing is that we're taking into account that this is a supercell environment. That's like our underlying assumption. There's going to be supercells today. If you're wondering, like, how do I know that? that the card, the card up there that video is going to lead you to the promised land. Watch that, come back here, and we'll get going. And one last caveat is this is for the plains. This is for like that area from Texas to North Dakota, New Mexico to Montana, maybe Iowa, Minnesota, but, but not, this is not fully applicable to the Southeast. Just so you know, like Mississippi, Alabama, some of this makes sense, some of this does cross over, some of it doesn't. Interesting how that works, right? So remember, keep in mind as we're going through these, this is for the planes. First tip, first thing I'm looking for, all things being equal, zero to three kilometer cape. The lowest three kilometers of the atmosphere need to be unstable for tornadoes. There are exceptions. There's exceptions to all of these rules, but I'm looking for about 100 joules per kilogram of zero to three kilometer cape or higher on average for the best tornado environments. So if you're looking at a, a dry line, you're looking at, at a, a set of targets, and only one of them has low level instability, only one of them is really unstable in the low levels, pick that one because that's the one that's gonna have the best chance to produce a tornado. Just saying, uh, if you're looking, you know, you're trying to figure out, well, is, are there actually gonna be tornadoes today? Or are we in the danger zone? That zero to three kilometer cape is a great value to look at. The more unstable low levels are, the more favorable it's going to be for tornadoes because that just increases that stretching, increases the spin in the lower atmosphere. Trust me, zero to three kilometer cape, just pay attention to that. It's magic. So the next thing I'm looking for, you're gonna sense a theme here, I think. I'm looking for the winds in the lowest levels of the atmosphere, just above the surface. 850 millibars on the lower plains, a little bit higher than that on the high plains where the surface is sometimes nearly at 850. So just so you know, just like the area just above, that's what we're looking at. And we're looking for winds that are out of the south and southeast. There have been actual studies done about this. And that wind direction tends to be the most favorable for tornado production. So you're looking for south to southeasterly winds, and you're looking for wind speeds in this layer, 30, 35 knots at a minimum for tornadoes, for, for absolute definite, like th there's a tornado environment today. You can get tornadoes lower. One great example is if the winds are out of the south at 20 at 850, but the upper level winds tend to like want to push the storm south, you're going to have a little bit of enhancement of that low level hodograph just by the storm moving south at 10 into 20 mile per hour winds. But that's a complicated side note. 
What you're really looking for most days, 30 to 35 knots minimum, the higher the better. Uh, a lot of days, like the big time tornado days, the high risk, you're looking at 50, 60 knots at that in that layer. So just so you know, the, the, you need this. You, you need low level wind shear. You need those big hodographs. And that is accomplished by those 850 winds just being just cranking out of the south and southeast. If you want a day with tornadoes that just happen over and over and over again, like this, May 24th, 2008, it's still one of my favorite storm chase days of all time. And that's because there was an east to west boundary. Tip number three, boundaries, look for them. If you're looking for boundaries that are east west, maybe a little bit southwest to northeast, maybe, I mean, it depends on like uh, the shear vector. Again, we talk about this in another video. Uh, about like shear vectors versus boundaries, storm modes, etc. But if you're looking for a day where you can get an isolated storm on a boundary and you want that storm to be able to latch onto that boundary and just roll with it because those boundaries, like an outflow boundary, the winds are usually a little bit locally backed, so you have an enhancement of the low level wind shear, but you also have a lot of spin in the lower atmosphere, a lot of turbulence, a lot of vorticity. Storms love that. So you oftentimes, some of the, my favorite storm chase days, have been on boundaries because those boundaries can really, really, really be tornado machines. So you look for boundaries, outflow boundaries, warm fronts are typically the two we're talking about when we're talking about boundaries. So the next tip, it's all about surface conditions. Tip four, we're talking surface conditions. We're talking about the surface wind, uh, speed, direction, temperature, dew point, those three things, super important to looking for tornadoes. Why is that? First off, surface wind direction. You're looking for something south, southeast. You're looking for it to be more easterly than what you have at 850. You want to have good turning in that lowest one to three kilometer area. You want, you just need that. So look for good backed, meaning more easterly winds in the surface layer. Also, when it comes to dew points, this is controversial at times, but 63, 64 on the lower plains, a little bit lower as you get out in the high plains, 60s on the high plains are amazing, 55, probably a bare minimum. That, that's what you're looking for for dew points. You're looking for something that's in that range. And why is that? It's because temperatures in the spring usually get to the mid 80s, sometimes pushing 90, it depends. So you're looking for temperature dew point depressions, which is take temperature and subtract dew point off of that you're looking for those to be 15 or less. So if it's 90 over with a 75 dew point, that's a 15 degree dew point depression. Also a very unstable atmosphere. If, you're, if you've got 80 over 65, again, 15 point, you're good. Anything 15 or below tends to be tornado city. 15, 20, possible, getting very unlikely beyond 20. And once you get to like 30, tornadoes just like, it's very rare to get tornadoes with 30 dew point depressions. It does happen usually on the high plains, but very rare. Uh, note on dew point depressions though. I think this is important uh, if you're wondering like where these like classic big tall tornadoes are going to happen. You're looking for that 15 degree, 20 degree spread area because those tall tornadoes tend to be a lot prettier. So you're looking for dew point depressions, 15 or less. You're looking for surface winds due east of south, somewhere like east of south somewhere, probably southeast, east, something like that. So. Surface conditions, simple, right? And the fifth and final thing I wanna talk about, clean inflow. This seems like obvious when you think about it, right? Like, oh, I need, the storm needs to be able to be like, able to maintain its strength. But you do, you need clean inflow. If you're targeting a Northern target and there's gonna be a bunch of storms formed to the South, that storm may have a brief window where it has clean inflow and can produce tornadoes, but once storm starts coming up and interacting with that updraft, it's gonna interfere, it's gonna gum up the process. Crowded storm modes are really bad for a lot of tornadoes to happen. Like those two things don't work well together. You're looking for a storm that has nothing to its south. So those strong 850s, those strong surface winds can just go and it just feeds up into that storm. There, it depends on the environment, it depends, but you, you, you need 30, 40 miles of spacing between storms at least to make this work at its best. The more the better though. If you've got nothing south of a storm, the environment otherwise supports tornadoes, you're really game on. Uh, if you've got a big time environment, storms are a little bit crowded and it's got just a little bit of room, you can still get tornadoes. Uh, Tipton, May 16, 2015. Lots of storms to the south of that, but it produced a monster from Elmer to Tipton. 
amazing storm chase day, strong tornado, really impressive. So, but at the same time, that storm did have clean inflow for about 20, 25 miles. So just snow, you just need storms to be by themselves as much as possible for tornadoes to occur. So hey, I hope you learned something today. Like we, we went over a lot, that was a lot. But tornadoes are actually, you can anticipate them pretty well if you just know what you're looking for. And these five things, I think, put you a long way down the road of being able to discern like where in this risk area will there be tornadoes today? Hey, if you like this video, if you like education, if you like talking weather, you like seeing weather content, subscribe, hit that button. This is the channel for you. Also, leave that comment. I told you to do it before, definitely do it now. If you have questions about this video, we might just make another one that talks about all of it as well. We, we might expand upon something. If you're like, I, that doesn't make sense, Rachel. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit deeper. Let's do another video. But I only know that if you comment. And hey, remember, this is complicated. Weather is infinitely complicated, infinitely fascinating, and it is for everybody. That includes you, whether you're a beginner, you're advanced, you're somewhere in between, weather is for you. And that is really cool. We'll see you next time.